Welcome back to Monroe Live. Well, we actually pulled something out of the past. This is the Imperium Skywell. There is a video from roughly three years ago. Sandy had purchased this after viewing it at the LA Auto Show. This is a Chinese EV vehicle that was not really being brought into the States. There are ways that you could get it, but he purchased this vehicle. We looked at it a little bit and it's been sitting in the parking lot for the last several years. So Sandy had purchased this to see what they were offering at a $30,000 vehicle. Now, most of the EVs that we've torn down, there are a couple that have gone into the 30s. Most of them have been around the 50 to $60,000 range. So we'll look at what features and what type of luxury options are available in this at that $30,000 range. So let's see what we can see. So just looking from this angle, again, most of the vehicles that we've looked at have been in the 50 to a $60,000 range. Looking at the types of decoration, the types of materials that they've offered for that price point. We see stitching on the instrument panel, uh, faux wood grain across um, basically the vehicle from door to door. Uh, chrome, which I don't believe is real chrome. I'm assuming that that is painted, but we'll find out as we go. Uh, more stitching through the center console artificial leather materials, perforated materials, some more than likely either some sort of ventilation or heating, decent size center screen display. Again, all of these types of features at a $30,000 price. For me, I'm looking at what type of machinery, what type of labor, what are my process steps to make each and every different one of those finishes. Let's get a real close look at that instrument panel. I want you to look at the stitching on the panel. You will see the very center groove actually is not a sewn seam. This is a thermoform skin that is stitched over top of its thermoforming. So the join seam, which would be in the center, is not a real seam. So this is thermoform, sewn, and then more than likely it is a poured in foam behind it after it's joined to the substrate. So I'm looking at very expensive tools, basically three very expensive types of tools in order to make that assembly. Looking at the air vents, this is also something that we were seeing more and more where the style of that air vent is carried from A pillar to A pillar across the vehicle, but it's still visible. We can still see it. It still has the mechanical function for angling the vents rather than the opposing air. Um, so even though it is more prominent, it is more streamlined from side to side rather than having big monuments sticking out in four different locations. So my materials for the door, I have an injection molded door panel coming up, plastic, plastic. This is actual cut and sew. So this is a real joint seam for the armrest. This is a vac formed panel. This is a vac formed panel. So both of these are offering soft touch, but slightly different materials between them. Now, okay, is there anything that impresses me about this door? Well, I like this. Why do I like this? You'll notice that this is the surround for the switch plate and the surround for the switch plate is the pull cup on the door, all in one component. Now, if I hadn't pointed that out, you probably wouldn't really notice. However, when I deal with some of my customers, the switch paint surround would be one material. The pull cup would be one material. The trim around it would be another. So they could have a three to a four piece assembly that all has to be either screwed together, snapped together, and then insulted the door. Having this being all in one piece, but yet does not really detract from the styling. It simplifies things. I like it. You are saving money, but then offering something to the customer that is still appealing. Many decisions like this across the vehicle are how you keep the final sales price of the vehicle down. So $30,000, again, would be very hard to build in the US for that price. Um, but by combining decisions like this across the vehicle, you can start to bring down the 50 and $60,000 price tags that we're seeing today. We have talked about these piano black trim pieces for so much. Almost every vehicle has them. Uh, we have talked about whether or not we like them. Now, this is still that timbre door. This is not a piano black. This is more of a matte finish. But when we looked at that Polestar, 
this was decorative piano black here. So similar type of condition, similar type of look. The Polestar did not have this piece of trim here. It was all flat, but honestly, the same general look as the Polestar in an $80,000 vehicle for this in a $30,000 vehicle. Here you can see what I was talking about for that air vent. Again, the air vent only exists on the end, but the styling of the air vent is carried through the entire vehicle. So here's your question. I'm paying for the air vent. I'm paying for all the vanes. I'm paying for that assembly. That has the chrome trim on it. I'm like, okay. So here I'm carrying over the chrome trim. I'm carrying over some of the painted components. Is it worth putting the money into this piece to carry that over? Or could I have gone less expensive there or something else? Well, think of it this way. If this did not carry through, I would have to extend this up or this down. If I took the top pad and extended it down, I would be creating more undercut conditions inside of the injection molding tool. Those undercut conditions make it more difficult to mold, make it more difficult to process. So there is a possibility that having this being a secondary, more expensive component, I may actually save effort and save costs if I were to carry this down. That is all geometry and assembly dependent, however. It could have been done less expensive by moving this piece down. It could have been worse. It would all just depend on the execution of the OEM and their engineers. Padded soft sun visors, uh, pretty basic design. However, I'm going to use this to actually pick on the Polestar. The Polestar, though it was a very, very nice vehicle, I did not like the sun visors. I did not make mention of that in the video. Now, the reason why I did not like the sun visors is because it was more of a vinyl material and it was heat sealed around the edges. That heat sealing creates a very sharp edge and it didn't really have a good feel, did not have a luxurious feel. This, even though it is very basic, it's just cloth like the overhead, has a much more luxurious feel to it. So when we were re reviewing the Polestar, I had made mention that I had plenty of legroom in the rear seat, plenty of headroom. This vehicle, I have that same type of feel, but you'll notice where is the headrest for my seat? It is basically in the middle of my back. Um, I would have to extend that headrest up quite a bit to be comfortable for me. So I, I don't know if I really like the height of the rear seats myself. There's a mat pocket on both sides. Okay, that's balanced nicely. Now we've had debate over the years on the cost of manufacturing the mat pockets, whether they are a hard plastic mat pocket, if it is just a net material, if it's a vinyl material. A lot of our customers have decided to save just a little bit of money and only include a mat pocket on the passenger seat. Idea being, if I'm the driver and I need to reach to grab something, I can grab it from this seat I cannot from this seat. So am I offering benefit to the driver? Am I offering a benefit to the vehicle as a whole? Uh, that is, however, a very, very minor decision of whether a mat pocket is present on the driver's seat. Now we have looked at this feature on some of the high-end vehicles that we've had where, where is the owner of the vehicle? Is the owner of the vehicle driving the car or is the owner in the back seat? Now I've had some vehicles that I have developed that we had four the China market and for the Korean market, where for them, these vehicles that were North American vehicles were treated more as limos. So the owner was in the back seat. I have controls to be able to move the front passenger seat to give myself more legroom, more comfort. So this is where you're questioning like, okay, so who is the most important person? The person who's in that passenger front or the person who's sitting here behind that passenger front. So this is a style feature that I do not like, and it is these shoulders. By raising this seat back along the sides of the headrest, I've increased the amount of vinyl material, I've increased the amount of foam that I have to fill in, and I have made a more complicated pattern that requires more sewing. Trimming out this is a pain and the problem is you get a style like this and then you wanna start doing other things with a style like this. This does not have a hard back panel, 
but I've had customers that have had this style and they wanted a hard back panel that would come up and match that shape. Trying to match the shape of something that's injection molded to something that is soft and squishy is almost impossible and it caused big quality issues and the fact that people would try and grab those back panels. This is much more of a stable condition if you would just cut this around than having this feature. So I personally don't like this feature. I don't like designing around this feature and I don't really think that it provides more comfort to the seat occupant because this is kind of up and outside of your back or your shoulders. You may have noticed the floor mats up front. I don't know if I'm gonna give them too much credit for these floor mats. You see these pop up sometimes on Amazon and Facebook having a diamond stitched uh, floor mat to throw in any of your vehicles. I'm assuming that this vehicle is probably built pretty close to the place that make those aftermarket mats and they were cheap enough to throw in here. So it is a nice little style. You'll see it on all the floor mats in the vehicle, but I don't really think that it was specifically designed for the mass market, especially since there's still a regular floor underneath of it. So I'm looking at this seat back. And again, I had mentioned that this seat back is sitting very, very, very low. Um, that headrest would have to go up very high for someone of my size to ride in this car. But I'm looking at the quality. Notice this fabric carpet panel. See how wrinkled that is. Most OEMs here in the US, that would not pass. If you saw something like that, it would be rejected. It would need to be reworked. So it's just interesting to see that right in the center, right off the bat. So this is a multi-position latch. So I can actually change to have a couple of different seat back angles for the rear seat occupant, whichever is more comfortable for you. I can release it up, fold the seat. Looks like that's as far down as I'm going. There is no flat floor in this vehicle that I can see. I can't see anything kicking back to allow that to fold all the way flat. So that would be very, very annoying. So the question becomes, why does this fold at all if it cannot fold all the way flat? Not sure. So this removable load floor is one big panel, it does have a seam, but I cannot leave it up, I cannot leave it half folded. So I would either have to completely remove it to the, from the vehicle or ha only have things in the bin that allow me to actually fold this down. So I couldn't fold it in half and then allow for storage. That's also interesting. Why is this a spring-loaded latch? There is no la actual latch. There is no locking feature. So this could have literally just been a D-ring in order to open this lid. Why is it a spring-loaded component? That seems odd to me. So if I'm considering this as a $30,000 vehicle, there's a lot in here that impresses me. If I'm an engineer, however, and I'm criticizing my own work, it appears that there are several things that were not fully thought out. It almost seems like they knew that they needed something, but they did not know how to properly execute it in a few points within the interior. Hopefully we'll have a few more videos of the exterior and other components before we start tearing this thing down and we can actually see how did they accomplish this internally. So please subscribe if you are not subscribed and stay tuned for more future videos from the teardown of the Skywall. Have a good day.